Welcome to some information on the spin along, knit along thing that I decided would be fun at the end of last week. So basically I have some beautiful, I have it all like in a messy little piles right now, but I had ordered this really gorgeous um, fiber from Akara Yarns and here's the little label. Um, this is her 100% Dorset and she had mentioned to me how it was really great for socks. And so I had ordered some and I am in the middle of a couple sweater spins. If you tune into my I'll knit and spin if I want to videos, I have been sharing some of my spinning and I'm doing two sweater quantities right now. Um, those are lengthy projects. So I really wanted, I needed like a quick palette cleanser once I finished plying my last set that I was working on. Um, also, I want to get, I've, I had kind of gotten into the habit of just using my Hansen. This is the Hansen mini spinner, little e-spinner. Um, and I'd really started using it basically just for plying and I kind of wanted to break that habit. I wanted to use it for other things and not just be like, I'm always going to spin all my singles on my match list and ply on my Hanson. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just was like, mm, right now my match list is so tied up with those sweater spins and I needed a quicker, like, I want something else to spin real quick. So I wanted to be able to utilize this. Um, so yeah, I saw this beautiful braid sitting in front of me and was like, you know what? I can always use another pair of hand knit socks. My friend Andrea Rangel talked me into knitting socks. It was like five years ago now. We were talking about hand knit socks and I was not a sock knitter. I very much was like, you know, with that quantity of stitches, I could knit a sweater. <laughs> Do I really want to put that on my feet? Um, so after a long discussion, she shared with me all of her, her pro reasons for hand knit socks. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And I have not looked back. I now only wear hand knit socks during the colder months. I wear them around my house. I wear them for hiking and walking. I have even worn them running. Um, I am a complete hand knit sock convert. You will always see in our laundry room, we have a sink and above it is always like five pairs of my socks drying. Um, and I think I've gotten in a really good flow with it. Now that I have more hand knit socks, I've gotten into this good flow of like washing four pairs, hanging those up to dry and um, really, really utilizing them. So anyways, my absolute favorite socks are the DRK Everyday Socks. It's a pattern I released, I think it was last fall. Could have looked that up. It all blurs together these days. So um, I have some to show you. I currently have five pairs of these socks. They are just very comfortable. So they, out of all my hand knit socks, they're the ones that I go and reach for every single time. So um, here's the ones that I knit when I was designing the pattern. Um, I do get asked quite often if people need sock blockers for blocking socks. You don't need sock blockers. What is nice about them is just how pretty <laughs> the socks look when they've been dried on a blocker. And you know, sometimes it's just nice to have some pretty things in life. Um, but you know, like this is the only set I have. In a general rule of thumb, I do not dry my socks on here unless it is the, I um, have just knit them. So usually the first blocking, I dry them on here because maybe I want to take a picture. I just want them to be pretty for a minute. Um, but otherwise, I honestly, I wash them in the sink in our laundry room, give them a good squeeze, and we have a bar, and I just drape them over and let them dry. And then they look like this. <laughs> just long tubes. Um, so when you really, really wear your knits, you you know, it becomes function over... Um, form? That's not right. Function over pretty is what we're going to say. Um, so anyways, 
This pair is out of Birch Hollow Fibers. This is her Sojourner base, which is a non-superwash sock base that has some nylon in it. And I mixed it with her Sylvia sock base um, to knit these. This is kind of like a throwback to my childhood, these little stirrup style. It was just fun color blocking um, that I wanted to do with those ones. And then this is Gage Dye Works in my all-time favorite colorway whiskey in a teacup i have two pairs in this colorway alone and i have another skein that i have saved because i love these ones so much that um if they ever wear out i want to be able to knit another pair so um those are those and so yeah anyways how this knit along spin along thing came to be i decided i needed a new spin and i wanted some more socks and I default to the DRK everyday socks and I was sitting here spinning and I thought, you know, this would just be a lot more fun with friends. So I hope that you will join me. You do not have to be a spinner. So quickly, spinners, I would love to spin along. Um, whoever wants to spin, jump in. My dream is that we're going to have some new spinners and some experienced spinners and that we're all going to share our best tips and tricks for spinning for socks and cheer each other on um, because I think spinning for socks is really fun and I love hand spun, hand knit socks. They are so cozy and comfortable and for those of us who really love spinning yarn from beautiful hand dyed braids, it is such a great way to spin play with how to spin and ply and see what's going to happen to those colors depending on all those choices that you make and and beyond spinning and plying i mean the you can do so much with like turning it into a bat using your blending board all kinds of fun things so if you are not a spinner you are still more than welcome to join you can absolutely use commercial yarn you can use as i said the yarns i used um, when i designed the pattern is birch hollow fibers engaged dye works so it works great with solid yarns speckled yarns self-striping yarns you can dig into your stash um recently i actually just knit these up over winter break because i again <laughs> decided I needed more socks um, and just wanted to play. It was like a treat yourself holiday knit. Um, so I wanted to knit something that I knew well because I've knit this pattern so many times. And so I actually just grabbed two different skeins from my stash of spin cycle yarns dyed in the wool. Um, I believe this is deep bump and even tied are the colorways I used and I just striped it. So I knit five rows and then I would change colors and that's all I did. Um, so for those of you who maybe don't spin but want a hand spun look, you can use a fun variegated yarn like this to create that. I do always get a lot of questions about using spin cycle yarns for socks. Um, it is not a sock yarn, it is a two ply yarn. So a lot of people worry about the stability and the strength of that yarn. Um, I have used it in a few pairs of socks, but this is my first spin cycle only socks. The other socks I've used it in, like my Curio socks and my, what did I name them? Sparks socks, um, are, I use another yarn in there as well that is a sock yarn. Yeah. Um, so that kind of helps any issues with strength there might be is it's not the only yarn. So I'll let you know how this goes. I'll let you know how these wear. Um, but my friend Kate, one of the owners of Spin Cycle, has absolutely knit socks out of their yarn. And she said she has a pair that she's had for 10 years and they're still going strong. So they do put a nice strong twist in their yarns. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know how those go. But that could be a fun option for those of you who want that hand spun look, but you don't spin. Um, and then I have my hand spun ones so i'm pretty sure the, this might be my first ever fractal spin um so i went a while into my spinning journey without knowing what fractal spinning was and i would just kind of try to get that fractal look um by experimenting <laughs> i didn't know that there was like a method so um then i learned the method and i think this was my first time. I'm just trying to look here. 
I actually did try to prepare for this video this time, <laughs> but here I am like, hmm. Um, I did not look up my notes ahead of time. Um, I wanted to show these though, because kind of like the spin cycle, these were not, oh, that's, nope. Apparently I had other plans for some hand spun and some DRK everyday socks. That's funny, okay, I found it. So this is Falkland, is the fiber that I spun that out of. Um, and it is from Nest Fiber, it was a club colorway. So, no, nope, nope, different one. That was for my curio socks. <laughs> so I have used hand spun in some socks. All right, if I don't find it soon, I will not make you keep looking at me as I'm looking, as I'm looking in a notebook. Um, I'm just so curious now. Hey -oh. And I put barely any information on this one, of course. Okay, so this is not a club colorway. This is a one of a kind colorway. And it's Finn, not Falkland. Uh, but it was four ounces and I spun fractally and knit these socks. And that's about all I said in my notes. So good job, Andrea. Do not note reps per inch or yardage or any of that useful information. But um, I know it was just a two ply and it came out to a, a pretty solid fingering weight. Um, so ooh, let me at least look at the date on there. So October, 2020. Okay, so I've had these socks for like a year and a half. And again, I don't know that I was planning on, because I took really poor notes, I don't think I was planning on knitting them into socks. I just wanted to try fractal spinning. So all I did is I divided my braid in half vertically, and then one half I just spun end to end, and then the other one I split into two, and then spun each of those end to end onto one bobbin and then I applied them together. But I certainly was not far enough into my journey to consider anything like the amount of twist I was putting in in regards to strength for the yarn I was making for socks. So all that being said, I've had these for a year and a half. You can see there is wear and tear on those heels um, and along the foot. You know, there's some pilling action. Um, but I wear these regularly. Again, I have worn them hiking and there's no holes. And it's been a year and a half. I feel like that's pretty good for somebody who really didn't know what they were doing as they spun this yarn and had not planned ahead. And I just say that for new spinners who are maybe a little afraid of spinning for socks. Um, just try it. <laughs> but hopefully during this spin along knit along we can all share knowledge so that those of you who are like me and are new and might need some tips and tricks on like hey i don't want to put all this effort into spinning this yarn and have my socks fall apart in a week uh tell me things that we can all share maybe some of the things we've learned or read or researched so this is my first hand spun version of those okay um so knit along information i again this was totally spur of the moment <laughs> just decided i wanted you all to join me so i am going to host it kind of the way i always do with my knit alongs i did set up a forum over in my ravelry group i will pop that link below but if you are a member of my group you can head on over you'll see it right there um stuck to the top of my discussion forum um, otherwise click the link below for those of you if there's anybody who's not using Ravelry um, we will also share on Instagram and I think that will be a really nice place where people can quickly share all of their like photo updates and everything like that um, and also maybe find some new spinners and knitters to follow which is always really fun I think um, so for that we're gonna do the hashtag which will be DRK spin it to knit it K-A-L for knit along. I'll write that below as well so that you can see exactly how to spell it. And one of the things I love now on Instagram is that you can follow a hashtag. So it's just like following a person, but it's everyone, you know, it populates anyone who uses that hashtag so that we can all 
watch each other on this little journey. Um, so the whole goal is to spin some sock yarn and to knit the DRK Everyday Socks. I'm going to um, gather up some prizes. I already have a couple ideas for prizes, but I'll post about those along the way. And I think to close this out, I'll just kind of show you what I'm spinning and my plan. So I kind of held it up earlier. Um, so this is Dorset from Akari Yarns and in the colorway Peacock. So it's mostly blues, but then it has these little tiny hints of green. There's one. And so what was interesting about this is when I was splitting it up, because it's a tonal, it's pretty, it's fairly solid. There's definitely some different colors in there, but I did not feel like I needed to go through fiddly fractal plans because the color wasn't um, placed in a way where I felt like fractal spinning it was, was worth it. I just, and yeah, I just didn't want to. <laughs> so I divided it into, I stripped it down, I think six times. So splitting it vertically, that braid, six times. Now I will say that the braid did not want to be split nicely. And so I kind of had to do my best. And then I used my scale and I weighed all my little nests of yarn and um, I'm spinning, because I had six, I'm spinning two per bobbin to make a three ply yarn. And I just used their weight to kind of bundle up my sets of two um, so that the bobbins would be as even as I could get them. Um, I've already done one bobbin. It's so funny because with the Hanson, I think these are 14 ounce bobbins. That's massive was for those of us who are used to spinning like my match list, the bobbins hold maybe four ounces, um, depending on how you spin that yarn. So this is, this is a third of my, um, fiber and it looks like there's barely anything on there, but so I have already spun one bobbin. Um, I am on to the second, I am just doing a short forward draft. I'm getting a decent amount of twist in there to add strength for the socks. And I actually did a control card and I'm really proud of myself. I think this might be the first time that I have done a control card in the couple years I've been spinning. So I also taking um, Kim McKenna's class on Oh, what's it called? It's leveling up your leveling up your spinning nuances and making a better yarn, something like that. Um, but it's on School of Sweet Georgia, and I was watching that class, and I had it had not occurred to me to when I'm doing my ply back if I am planning to do a three ply yarn to fold it once more so that the ply back actually represents three plies instead of just letting it fold back on itself once, which would only be two ply. Um, so I loved seeing that trick. I found that really helpful. So here is my little ply back sample. And then um, thank you to Jillian Moreno who is giving me tips on these cards. And so I then wrapped my single, um, around the card too so that as I'm spinning especially on my wheel because I on my hand sitting because I am practicing using this still and just um wanting this to be like a really nice smooth as consistent as it can be spin um now I can just lay my spin across these to kind of make sure that my thickness is staying pretty consistent um, and otherwise I put on here my goal, how I am drafting it, the company who made the fiber, fiber content, um, fiber prep, and also I'm putting that I'm spinning it on my Hanson. Um, since I have a Hanson and a match list, oh, oh, <laughs> excuse me one minute. Um, well, let's just hope it's still recording through there. Um, I just think it's kind of fun, especially because looking back over time, I, I just, I like that information, I guess is what I'm saying. So yay for control cards. I will also end up adding on here wraps per inch, twist angle maybe. I even bought myself a protractor. Um, 
because I'm trying to just learn all the things and it's really fun. So I hope you'll come learn with me. I, there are some knitting tutorials for the DRK everyday pattern, everyday socks. I should say socks because I'm wearing the sweater right now and that might be confusing <laughs> because they have the same name. Just one's a sweater and one is socks. Um, but I do have a video for the Turkish cast on. Um, and yeah, anything else? I talked about my spinning. I talked about where to do it. I think that's it. Oh, length of it. I thought two months. I thought that felt pretty good. I knew, I heard a couple people who were like, I just ordered a wheel and they're waiting on their wheel. Um, and if, somebody, if anybody wanted to order fiber and needed to wait for it, um, if you don't have any stash fiber that you want to use, it's really windy outside, sorry. I just heard something clanky clank. Um, what else? That distracted me. Give a shout out to your favorite, favorite, favorite fibers to spin socks out of. I would love to hear that. I'm super stoked to try this Dorset. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. I feel like I'm forgetting important information, but if I remember it, you know, um, I am, I looked at a watch I don't have on. Um, yeah, I guess that's all. If you have any questions, let me know. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's gonna go for two months. Yeah, I think this is it. I think I said all the things that needed to be said. Everybody's welcome. I would love to make some new spinner and knitter friends. So I hope you'll join and I'll see ya. See ya in the knit along. All right. Bye everybody.